Hey everybody, welcome to the Skyland Shooter to discuss some Lakers action. Oh, -ho! the funny thing is I am actually going to be in Los Angeles when this video releases. I'm actually recording this way in advance because I'm not going to have time and probably decent internet service. Why am I whispering? Okay, so as the video suggests, I'm going to Review the 2018-19 season for the Lakers because Lord fucking knows I promised everybody I'm going to make a video about this shit for weeks. Didn't do it, and here we are. The Lakers. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. If you saw the videos from last season, or actually this, uh, before the season started... The optimism and joy was over the fucking roof for me, boys and girls. I was so excited. I thought we were going to get an LBJ that was much, much younger than I would have imagined. And yes, boys and girls, I, I should have tempered my expectations, but I didn't. I didn't. I really thought lots of great things were going to happen. We're going to get to the playoffs and Lonzo, Josh Hart... Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, these guys are all going to show out in the playoffs for the first time with LeBron James. And yes, even though they called it the meme squad, I was ready for some Michael Beasley, Lance Stevenson, Rajon Rondo, KCP, and JaVale McGee action, boys and girls. You have no idea when I say that. I was fucking ready. What ends up happening is the Lakers couldn't fucking close out games earlier in the season. And during that, there was this Christmas game against the Warriors, and although we blew out the Warriors at the Oracle, LeBron James got injured that game, subsequently leaving him out for the majority of the season, and after that, really, the pieces all started falling out, like, everybody's getting injured, Lonzo's getting injured, Brandon's getting injured, actually had a, um, oh boy, hit a really fucking significant medical issue I, for, I forget boys and girls it was uh was it a chest or heart thing um but he fortunately he got better kudos to brandon ingram for getting better but he was out josh hart out kyle kuzma essentially became the one kind of guy who yes eventually he was injured too but he was the one fucking glimmering hope of that young roster that was hopefully gonna keep this thing together and maybe next year we're gonna Go at it. But fucking what happens during the trade deadline, boys and girls? What the fuck happens during the trade deadline? Not just LeBron James, boys and girls. LeBron James, Rich Paul, Magic Johnson, Rob Palenka, Jeannie Buss, all figure that the greatest idea right now when everything is just in the slumps is to go for an all-in trade for one guy. And the initial, the, the initial fucking thing that the Pelicans GM, I forget his name. You're fucking gone. Now David Griffin has your fucking job. Good goddamn job. But the Pelicans wanted basically three first round picks. Kuz, Zoe, B.I., and Hart. All four players. That That's, that's fucking crazy. Again, the, the whole idea was, yes, we're going to trade all this for one player. Everything's going to get better. But it didn't. The trade didn't happen, and everything got significantly worse in the locker room. And if you boys and girls want to rewind the tape, I don't even mind. I have fucking firmly said in those videos, and I still hold true to what I have said in those videos, because not a lot of the circumstances have changed. Um, we'll see if LeBron James can be a decent human being in the locker room this time around. But I call him a cancer. I call them the cancer because you you take over a host body, try to expel all the white blood cells and kill everything off. I know it's a weird analogy, boys and girls, but that's what I felt like at the time. And essentially, if you still ask me about that move back in February, I would have still said that is the most cantankerous shit you can do. You're the new player in town. My God. And I know you're the best player. You know, back in July, he was last year, he Arguably, you could say he's the best player on the goddamn planet. But everything just kind of fell apart. And you knew by the offseason, you know, whether 
you know, the Lakers were going to make it wasn't really a debate at this point because right before the All-Star break, when they lost to the Atlanta Hawks, I knew they weren't going to make it to the playoffs, and they didn't because they ended the season 37-45. and 45. And again, when the offseason started, there wasn't really going to be any touchy-touchy shit with all the players now because essentially everybody knew LeBron James and the entire organization did not want them. And that kind of leads us to the free agency period, right? Right before free agency, there was a trade. I believe it was a three, four first round picks. Uh, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, and Lonzo Ball, all for AD. That trade was official. And I remember my initial reaction was just god awful rage. Just, just rage. And the funny thing, too, was what the, this was, was it before? after uh, the Raptors won the championship but that dynamic of the Raptors you know winning the championship for the first time in their franchise history you know created a lot of crazy narratives in the free agency period and again as a huge Lonzo Ball fan and a fan of B.I. Josh Shard all those guys I was super bummed out but at the same time Despite me saying and even noting that AD has been a perennial injury injury prone player, this guy is a top five player. So again, as as cautious as I am, I was very excited. But again, the dynamic of the the Raptors winning the championship really set forth this free agency period where it became fucking cuckoo banana land. And boys and girls, I mean, if you've caught up with the NBA, we all know what the hell happened. No no, no spoiler alert, but Kawhi. Paul George lands in the Clippers, and Lakers now have the duo of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and we still keep Kyle Kuzma. So, coming out of a 37-45 and season, 10th overall in the Western Conference, the Lakers couldn't generate any momentum, they couldn't even fucking close out games, and the absolute disarray the locker room went through after that trade deadline was the mark of the downfall for that 2018-19 Lakers. I mean, February was really that time where you could pinpoint that exact moment where the Lakers lost. And this function kept following, but yeah, the trade becomes official. We get AD. And now we got a lot to look forward to in the 2019-2020 season. Our roster is a 14-man roster at this point, right? I mean, I could name all the guys if I want. So as of this recording... Uh, which I'm going to release on Friday, which is what, July 19th? Boys and girls, i got to check this shit all the time because my brain don't work so well. We got LeBron James, we got Anthony Davis, Kyle Kuzma, DeMarcus Cousins. That's right, boys and girls, DeMarcus Cousins. Danny Green, Avery Bradley, Rajon Rondo, JaVale McGee. Oh, boy. Do not crap out on me, brain. Jared Dudley, Quinn Cook. Oh, boy, this, this is going to be tough now. Quinn Cook. Ah, uh, holy shit. Alright, I'm missing four more, guys. I'm missing four more. And they're going to come to me. Talon Horton Tucker. Well, he's a two-way player, so technically no. I got the ten guys right now. Alright, Brain is really crapping out on me, boys and girls. KCP! KC fucking P. My God. That's right. KCP, Alex Caruso. That's another one. Man, I, and, and I'll, I'll tell you what. Eventually, eventually we'll have a fleshed out roster. I'm missing two fucking players. I know. I know. You gotta forgive me. I'm trying to remember this off the top of my brain. And I saw the 2018-19 roster and I thought, oh shit, Alex Caruso was there. But yes, got a 14-man roster as of July 9th, 18th today. Technically 18th today, but it's gonna be 19th tomorrow. So whatever, whatever. We got a roster. That's the important part. We got a roster. The important, the after that, the important thing after that, it's to develop chemistry. Get these guys chatting it up, making acquaintances early. Because building chemistry early is the foundation of a successful franchise slash team slash potential champion. So, with the Warriors losing the way they did, losing all the players in, in terms of injuries in the finals the way they did, and subsequently with KD going to Brooklyn with Kyrie, the NBA has become wide open. 
Clay is going to be out until probably February or March. So this Warriors stranglehold that the NBA has gone through for the last five years is over. And I know the Cavs winning the championship in 2016, you know, may mean something. But when a team makes it to five straight fucking NBA finals, that that's a dynasty. And that's officially over. Well, we don't know. I mean, maybe the Warriors make it to the playoffs, but it's officially over. Parody has come back to the NBA. And yes, there was a potential alternate timeline where Kawhi Leonard joins the Lakers, and that too is actually Kawhi Leonard. But it didn't turn out that way. Free agency smiled in favor of the Clippers, and so now every team has a shot, including my Lakers. So... It's going to be an interesting 2019-2020 season. It was a interesting 2018-2019 season. So there you have it, boys and girls. That is the Lakers review and preview. So follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. 